the food that you feed your children will determine how their health is going to be five years down the line, 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. The food that you feed your children will, res be, will be responsible for their growth, musculoskeletal, <clears throat> the brain, the liver, the heart, the kidney, their immune system is all dependent on the food that you feed your children. Now we've been talking about junk food for a long time over the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> what we need to understand that it is, <clears throat> it is not possible and not realistic to live in a world like today without having our children exposed to some amount of junk. So we're not here trying to create this extreme method of stopping complete junk food with your children. If you can achieve that, great, share those ideas with me. What we're looking at is maintaining balance, okay, because children will eat junk. If they don't eat junk in your home, they're going to eat junk out of your home. In schools, if schools don't allow it, that's great. As they grow up and they go into university, <clears throat> they are going to be exposed to junk and then they're going to experiment as well. So we have to break away from the mindset that we cannot, that it's, you know, we have to stop junk completely for our children. What we're aiming for is balance. What we're aiming for is moderation and what we're aiming for is education and awareness. Okay, because no matter how much you explain, and this is my taking from every kid session that I've done for kids around the world, no matter how much they understand and how much children understand that junk is detrimental for their health and it will cause issues with their weight and their immunity, they will still do it. So we can't focus on telling them not to do it anymore, but what we can do is we can reason with them, we can negotiate with them, we can plant that seed of awareness in them. So if they do it, at least they'll do it with some awareness that, hey, listen, okay, I've got to stop right now because this is too much and it will affect me if I go overboard. So that's what we're trying to do. Now, when you look at ways of cutting down junk in your child's life, <clears throat> there are a couple of things that I want to dis uh, talk about today. Number one, the younger you start, the better off you are. So when you start with your children at a young age inculcating, you know, or cultivating these habits of health within your family, it goes a long way. You may still find them worrying you for junk. Okay, that doesn't mean that you've done a, a bad job as a parent. But as, as the younger you start, the, the easier it's going to be for you to cultivate this habit in children because they, they get aware of what is right for them and what is not right for them. But like we speak about junk food, the most detrimental ingredients, two of them in junk food that gets your child addicted at a neurological level is salt and sugar. So when you put salt and sugar in your child's diet at a very, very young age through junk food, they get addicted. Their receptors get addicted and all the tantrums and all the attitude that they show you when they want junk food is being driven, not because they're badly behaved children, but because it's coming from an addiction cycle that is created from the moment you start feeding them excessive salt and sugar. So we got to understand from a young age, that's when you start moderation. Okay. The second method, you got to be a role model to them. If your children see you eating junk, if your children see you leading a life where they think that outside food all the time is okay, that eating sugar and ice cream and all of these things is okay, that is exactly what they're going to do. And then no amount of you telling them to cut down junk is ever going to work if they see you doing it. So like I always say, your children will never listen to what, you're, what you tell them to do. They will do what they see you doing. So you've got to be the role model parent. You've got to decide that, for example, if you've had a week where you've not exercised and you've been bad on your food, you need to punish yourself as the parent and tell them, listen, I'm not going to have junk this weekend because I didn't do my exercise. I didn't drink enough of water. I didn't drink the amount of fruits that I should be eating. So this weekend, there will be no junk. Next weekend, if we want to have junk as a family, we will eat our fruits. We will drink our water. We will do our physical activity and throw in a few more things that you want to get out of them. And that's how we cultivate health as a lifestyle in the family. You got to be the role model. <clears throat> Explaining to them why bad food is bad for them and why good food is good for them is extremely essential for a child because children use logic. Children do not like authority. Children use logic as to why they shouldn't do something. So you may explain to them why a bag of chips isn't good for them. You may still allow them to eat it, but it is still your responsibility to tell them why you feel that they shouldn't eat it. So you go ingredient by ingredient, you give them examples of how certain ingredients cause issues later on in life, you try to relate it with current sicknesses that you may have in the family, and you let them think about it. You let that information soak into their brain. Likewise with good food, just telling them eat good food because it's good, or you eat good food because a nutritionist told you to eat. No, it never works that way. Even when patients and clients come to me, even though they know that there are good foods and bad foods, I always explain to, the log explain to them the logic why the food is bad for them, one, why it's good for them. 
Because when logic sets into your brain, you tend to start doing it the right way. But if we're just told to do it with authority, it never works. <clears throat> so explain to your children why certain good foods are good for them and why bad foods are bad for them. The grandparent <clears throat> syndrome in India has to change. So obviously you're trying to inculcate great habits in your children and you have the grandparents spoiling them. That's not a bad thing. Grandparents will always do that. We're not here to be strict with them. But explain to your grandparents why you're trying to make these changes. It isn't, times have changed right now. In their times, there was, not, there was no overconsumption of sugar. There was more quality in the processed food. There was more quality in the kind of food that we fed them. Most of it was made at home. Your grandma probably made sweets and you know, all of this junk at home, which was far better for you than it is for children today. So explain to them that, yep, you want to feed them junk, there's moderation, these are the items that you can use, these are the items that we want to stay away from. Because your parents and your grandparents don't know that things have changed, they don't know that food lobbies are deceiving us with the ingredients that they use. You know, so it's very important that you sit the grandparents down and explain to them exactly why we're making these rules for them. Okay, never use food as a reward or a bribe. You never want to tell your child that, okay, fine, if you eat your food, I'll give you a dessert. If you do well in school, I'll take you out for an ice cream. Because food is supposed to be for energy and growth and for the human body. Okay, we don't make it a reward. You want to reward your children or bribe them? Bribe them with a book, bribe them with a toy, something which is educational. You know, but do ne never bribe them with food or reward them with food. That's the wrong thing to do for your children. <clears throat> what you feed your children in school is also important. So you want to make sure that you're feeding them good food inside and outside. So what you pack in your lunch boxes for your children will also continue that habit that you're trying to build in your family of good health as a lifestyle. Once in a way, if you shop and if it's not your drivers who are shopping for you or your servants who are shopping for you, it's a nice idea for you to involve your children into the shopping process. I can't tell you how many children in the U.S. still don't even know what broccoli is or what cabbage or cauliflower looks like. I shouldn't just be talking about the U.S. because it's happening in India as well, to be fair. So, you know, involve your children. Take them down to buy vegetables. Take them down to buy groceries, you know, so that they can see you read labels. You can actually have this whole interactive game with them where, you know, select this food, this food. teach them to read labels. You know, involve them. Children like to be involved in experiences. And that's how you build bonding and that's how you build a culture of health in the family as well. We have to understand that look for triggers in your children. If there are too many cravings coming in them, all the time they're craving for sweet stuff, sweet stuff, you may want to look at their gut health. Because if they have too much of the bad bacteria and less of the good bacteria, the bad bacteria is what is creating those constant cravings in them, even though you may be feeding them the right food. So if they've gone through antibiotics, you want to make sure they're on a probiotic so that the gut bacteria is fine. If they've been eating too much of sugar and junk, the cravings are obviously going to be more and more because we've been feeding the bad bacteria, which is growing more than the good bacteria. And that's how the cravings start in children and adults as well. So we want to make sure that we don't ignore the signs of gut, poor gut health in children. Never confuse thirst with hunger. This happens as adults as well. We think we're hungry, but sometimes we're thirsty because we all live in air-conditioned environments, we work in air-conditioned environments, and sometimes we don't feel thirsty. It doesn't mean that the body's not dehydrating. So never confuse thirst with hunger. Most people, most people confuse thirst with hunger, including children. Make sure that they are <clears throat> given the right amount of water first. And if they're hungry out of a meal routine that you've made for them, first make them drink water and then see. Wait for five minutes. If they're still hungry, feed them. But sometimes we confuse thirst with hunger. And the last point is sleep. Children who have less sleep will have more hunger and more cravings for junk food during the day. The same thing with adults. If you look, the nights that you sleep less, you're irritable. You have more cravings for all the bad things, stimulants, sugar, salt. The same things happen with your children, which is why it's so important that you maintain the sleep cycles of your children. It's not just the quantity of sleep, but it's also the cycle of sleep. You want to try to make children try to sleep at the same time every day. Because everyone's body, forget about the adults right now, we're talking about children. We have the circadian rhythm in the body. That's your biological clock. Yes, your body has a clock. And there are certain things that have to happen at the right time. So when we constantly keep messing up the sleep cycles of our children, we mess up their digestion, we mess up their hormonal balance, we mess up, we mess up their uh, detoxification and their growth. So it's important to try to maintain the same time of sleep for your children.
because the biological block, uh, clock keeps ticking for everyone. And it's the same for adults. Of course, we already have excuses as to why we can't sleep at a particular time every night. That's a lifestyle choice. That's a lifestyle change for you. But it's the same thing. Most people who start sleeping at the same time every day find that their cravings are lesser, their health gets better, their bodies are cleaner, they lose weight much faster because everything follows a biological clock. Nature as well as your body because you're a product of nature. So these are the points that you look at rather than just telling your child, stop eating junk. Another one that I want to end the, co the whole uh, video on today is the more junk you keep at home, the more junk your kids will eat, the more junk you will eat because it's accessible. It's easy. How many of you woke up in the middle of the night okay, and found that there was no chocolate bar in the fridge and you just went back to sleep? Okay? You wouldn't go out searching for a 24-hour chemist to buy a bar of chocolate. Okay, what is at home you will eat? So do not keep junk at home. It should be such that if you want junk, you need that effort to go out and get it. Of course, we live in a world where you can call up and have junk delivered to your doorstep today. But what I'm trying to say is get the point. The less that you keep at home, the easier it is going to be for your kids and for you to be off junk. When you know it's in your fridge, it's subconsciously working on you that, hey, it's there, it's there. It's there. And when you're constantly fighting willpower not to do it. It works with your, ch your children the same way. So we want to make these little lifestyle changes to cut and moderate the junk in our children's life. Create healthy options for them. Have more dark chocolate. Have more sweets and desserts which are made out of jaggery, pure honey, pure maple syrup, pure date syrup. All of these things are possible. Your children want to eat cupcakes. Teach them to bake at home. Get an oven. Teach them to bake. Involve them in the process of making cookies and making cakes and making all these things are far better because you have control over the quality of ingredients, which even like five star hotels and bakeries use the worst quality salt, the worst quality oil and the worst quality shortening. So you still have quality when you involve your children in doing these little things. Now, all this takes is a little bit of effort, a little bit of time. And if you want to do it, you find a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Have a great weekend, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep.